Food Chains and Webs. My name is Charlie Haffey. I am an elementary science teacher for the Norwood Public Schools. What is a food chain? All living things, called organisms, are related by their eating habits. What that means is they're related by their source of energy. Where do they get their energy from? It starts with the sun. The sun is a star. It gives off light and heat. Heat allows for liquid water. Light is a key for plant growth. Producers. Any green plant. The green pigment is called chlorophyll. And the plant uses chlorophyll in a process called photosynthesis. The chlorophyll allows the plant to convert light energy into chemical energy, and the plant uses that chemical energy to make food. Usually, we think of producers as vegetables and fruits, but there's a lot of plants on the planet Earth that make their own food. A first order consumer is an organism that eats plants. A first order consumer does not eat animals. A second order consumer eats animals that eat plants. A third order consumer eats a second order consumer. Do you see the pattern here? Scavengers. Scavengers eat leftovers. They eat dead animals and dead plants. Scavengers are very successful because they don't have to hunt and kill anything, and they don't have to fight for their food. Decomposers. Decomposers break down dead organisms. They make dirt. These are nature's recyclers. Most people think of worms as decomposers, but really bacteria, fungus, also known as mushrooms, and mold are probably more important in nature as decomposers. The food chain. It starts with the sun. And here we have a sunflower. And the energy from the sun is actually transformed into the sunflower during photosynthesis. So we say the sunflower because it uses the energy of the sun, is a producer. A little mouse is going to eat the little sunflower because the energy that's stored in the sunflower is going to go into the mouse when the mouse eats the sunflower. We say that the mouse is a first order consumer. Now, you're also going to see this written, or you might hear it expressed as a first-class consumer. Same thing. Here we have a little snake. The little snake 
is going to eat the little mouse. Because the food energy that's stored in the mouse is going to go into the snake, and the mouse is a first-class consumer, that's going to make the snake a second-order consumer or a second-class consumer. Here we have a picture of a barn owl, and barn owls just love yummy snakes. Because the energy that's stored in the snake is going to go into the barn owl when the barn owl eats the snake, and because the snake is a second-class consumer, that's going to make the barn owl a third-class consumer. But barn owls are just pretty clever. They know they can get a meal by eating the mouse directly. And if the food energy stored in the mouse goes into the barn owl, what's going to happen is that because the mouse is a first-class or first-order consumer, that's going to make the barn owl, by eating the mouse, a second-class consumer. If we put a bunch of food chains together, we get a food web. And this is a very simple example of a food web. Sometimes they get a little more complicated. And here, on the bottom line, are mostly the producers. And if you look a little bit up, you can see fungi. And again, that's mushrooms. And then up a little higher, that would be the first order or first class consumers. And then above, it gets really complicated with the second and third class consumers. It can get more complicated than this. And here we have a food web that is so complicated that they didn't have room to put the names of the organisms they just put in numbers. Where are you in a food web? It depends on what you eat. This has been Food Chains and Webs. My name is Charlie Haffey. I am an elementary science teacher for the Norwood Public Schools.